Hello, how are you? I am because I am going to be doing some of the Capellan missions, which are a lower tonnage, gearing up my Orion. One of them. Pasta is good. I like pasta. Do have a four pit five and Artemis. I have a four pit ten and Artemis. Yes, so it is a seventy ton battle mech. Uh, seventy five, sorry. They're they're quite versatile. They have a bunch of different hard points. Um. Famously, uh, Alexander Kerensky, who was the last official commander of the Star League Defense Force, uh, piloted an Artemis, uh, an Orion, sorry, uh, although supposedly canonically all of the uh, depictions of the famous battles put him in a Highlander, they are in fact wrong. ton of SRM Artemis ammo, as much armor as we can get. Yeah, the, the Highlander's 90 tons? Eight, yeah, the Highlander's 90 tons and is a very um, distinctive assault. And it was also used by like the official bodyguard regiments. Let's go with a half ton of SRM Artemis if we can find it. Couple more double heat sinks. Uh, so I have a ton left. It's not worth me putting the armor in. Because then I'd be left with a weird amount of... Uh, Tonnage left over. My heat sinks are probably good. And my ammo's probably good. Put in another ton of it, AC ten, I suppose. I tend to use my AC-10s a lot. Now we just need to decide what mission we're going to do. Yes, especially in a battle mech. Um, your power is a fusion reactor, which generates a bunch of heat to begin with, especially if it gets damaged. Um, and then various weapons generate heat as well. I think we'll do this one. So anyway, uh, missiles generate a fair deal of heat uh, just from proximity to the rocket engines. Uh, you also generate a fair deal of heat in them um, with uh, uh, lasers, PPCs and the like. 
just by the nature of them. Ballistic weapons usually less so. Um, it's a trade-off for having ammo. And if you get too hot, like if your mech gets too hot, it slows down, it can shut down. Um, in this, um, ammo explosions aren't really an issue, but they are a big feature in the, uh, in the tabletop game. Uh, so, we are fighting bandits. The Capellan Confederation hates my guts, uh, but the feeling is mutual. If they weren't going to pay me, I wouldn't be working for them. Because of the heavy weather, your visibility will be compromised on this mission, Commander. Stay frosty. Uh, we are apparently working for a sub-faction of the Capellans, the Church of Cali. Yes, uh, at the moment, apparently one of their uh, disciples has decided to go rogue and uh, start with the human sacrifices early. So we are to hunt down this disciple and uh, stop them. We will put you in. We'll put you in the privateer. And uh, that is my understanding. And I will take the Orion. I'm going to take a minute to repaint my mech, because I am in boring colors. So I am slightly squishier than my allies, which might be a concern. On the other hand, I have a pretty reasonable build here. I know I do, because I built it myself. The way I see it, it is impossible to hide 70 tons of war machine. So I'm going to make sure my enemy knows... Uh, I maybe should have come in in one of the heavies. New target, Vulcan. I may have forgot. Destroy. 
Why thank you? So, you may have noticed when I was setting up um, my the, the Orion here, uh, all of my missiles have uh, our plus arc 4 uh, linked to a Artemis 4 fire control system, which is extremely useful. Uh, in the tabletop, Artemis gives you a bonus when you roll to see how many missiles out of your volley actually hit. In this, it means that if you get a hit with your missiles, it tightens the spread on them. Yes, yes, it means all of your missiles are hitting in the same section. Uh, which means that you can bring your opponent down quicker because you're not spreading the damage out. The issues with Artemis is that it is both heavier and more expensive. Additional bogies setting an intercept course on your position. Hello, trouble. He sounds aptly named. New target spotted. Focusing our fire on target. Target acquired. Hey, an actual hunchback. I'm gonna deal with this range because that AC-20 packs a punch. That's a shame. I mean, I suppose it does mean that you wound up getting him. Hey, that's always a plus. Never had a cat myself. My, my spouse and I uh, have kept a number of ferrets over the years. Which I think you already know. Lance target received. Bit of a move. Ooh bit of a dick move. We we had a lodger for a while who um, they got a rabbit while they lived with us and when they moved out, they did not take the rabbit. 
they also, and this is significant, did not inform us they weren't taking the rabbit. My spouse went upstairs just to make sure that uh, they hadn't forgotten anything and went, why is there a rabbit in the bedroom? Uh, well, uh, we kept, we, we actually, we, we know the person they got the rabbit off personally. So we kept the rabbit for about a year and a half and then returned it because it's a good combination. Clear that target. It's about to go critical. So, uh, after about a year and a half, you know, we hadn't been able to let the rabbit out of its cage near as much as it should have been out. So we just arranged for the person who'd originally had it to take it back. Because they had um, passed it along to our lodger because our lodger wanted a pet, not because they couldn't keep it. So. Yes. Yes. Deal with the locust for me. I'll get the cicada. Enemy mech destroyed. If I can catch up. There we go. They're bringing the sensible catapult. So catapults are one of the classic um, missile chassis. Uh, yes, the A1, which is the original catapult build, decided that it did not need uh, defensive weapons. Um, so that one's uh, the, the C1 variant, which decided to back up its missiles with a bunch of medium lasers so that if someone gets in closer than its missiles can fire, or if it runs out of ammunition, it can still do things. The, the A1 does not have those lasers. So if you get within 150 meters, it can't do a thing. didn't need that cockpit.
fire starters are aptly named. The uh, standard is armed with many flamers. And I think that one might be standard. because it looks very dead. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's a mix of flamers and machine guns on them. They're, they're designed for close-in work, urban work. Also for dealing with infantry, which are usually not the biggest threat to battle mechs. Yes. They don't crop up in the video games. Except maybe the, the strategy one. They don't pop up in the pilot games. Uh, but you can feel them in the tabletop. Um, there are things infantry can do that battle mechs can't. Like clearing buildings. And there are ways for infantry to deal with battle mechs. Uh, it's not a popular technique because the casualties tend to be very high. But if infantry can get around the foot of a battle mech, there's a lot of uh, hinges and things that uh, a satchel charge can do a number on. It's possible... But you need a tripwire that can, you know, stand up to 70 tons and is anchored to stand up to 70, 100 tons. All right. Ooh. I'll grab the countermeasures. Nothing else is really worth grabbing. Yes. Yeah, so I was pretty much the only one who took damage there. So apparently the uh, minion escaped. But we have located her base of operations in the house carl system. They want me to burn it to the ground. So let's just go and do that, shall we? The base. It's um, very difficult to burn an entire system to the ground. Hey, I can take 300 tons. So 
So, this is not my favorite King Crab because it is very ammo dependent. However, machine guns are really, really useful uh, for this style of mission. Ah, uh, which it has. And I can handle the, uh, the AC-10s on it. I think it's LBX AC tens. Yeah. So your standard auto cannon is basically a rifled cannon. And the number two, five, ten, twenty uh has to do with um the weight of ammunition it can put downrange over a set period. The The same thing goes for the LBX auto cannons, but instead the of being... believe the heretics have seized one of their safe houses and are using it as their base of operations. They want you to raise the location to the ground to ensure that no one escapes. Uh, instead of being a uh, rifled cannon, the LBX are much closer to shotguns. The, the standard versions, yes, yes, the standard versions fire effectively canister, and they were designed for anti-aircraft and anti-infantry work. Uh, I'm using ones with solid shot, which is basically firing slugs. Because I find that the uh, the spread on the projectile spread, the cluster spread on the uh, standard LBXs is too wide for the sorts of shots I favor. Because I'm in a hundred ton mech, I can just walk through a lot of the structures. Which does make this sort of demolition mission considerably easier. That is a question I know the answer to.
target. Champion. We're on your target, Commander. Uh, the answer is almost certainly Comstar. Who has part of their let's keep humanity from being able to blow themselves uh, back to the Stone Age. Uh, like to uh, basically space um, AT&T. When the first Star League broke up, they were the Ministry of Communication. And they basically uh, took all of... Yes, exactly. If you come across someone who has tech that they really shouldn't, it's a safe bet they got it from Comstar. It means that if I hadn't spent so much of the early game uh, making sure that the Capelling Confederation didn't like me, the salvage on this would be really good. Just a wee bit more, Commander. This complex is on the verge of collapse. Unfortunately, for a large number of lore reasons, I am not particularly fond of the Capellans. Which may have shone through in uh, my choices as to who I did missions for. Uh, They are one of the more um, oppressive regimes. That's not one of the structures I can plow through. Rifleman and a Jaeger bank. Riflemen tend to be pretty fragile. They were intended for use as anti-aircraft mechs and cannot stand up to a lot of brawling, which is great because king crabs were invented as brawlers. Now safe for me to extract. Target is down. They are another one of the great houses that decided to go with a artificial culture as well. Uh, the early, uh, pretty much, the early. Um, rulers of the Capellan Confederation were um, the Lao family, L-I-A-O, who were of Chinese heritage and decided that their Capellan Confederation was going to be very aggressively Chinese. And much like the Draconis Combine, you know, the Watsonian um, reasoning is that it was an artificially manufactured culture from those aspects of Chinese history that most um, suited the Laos and the Doylean version is it was the 80s and yellow terror sold
I would like that Phoenix Hawk. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the salvage for that Phoenix Hawk. I'll grab the flea, because it's worth worth more money than my other options. Ooh, Artemis ammo. That's worth grabbing. So they intercepted some of the Blasphemer's followers as they fled my last attack. After some persuasion, I assume that significant pause implies torture, they were kind enough to provide the will of Kali with some information. The heretic goes by the name of Aditi Whidby, and before we even made it back to our ship, the loyal followers were able to get everything they need on the service of their true leader. Uh, ba -ba -ba, was desperate enough to find new follower, or was desperate to find new followers to the will of Kali's cause, and was spouting a false interpretation of their beliefs to anyone misguided enough to listen. Hello. Uh, somehow the pretender became mad, thinks the true leader spoke to her privately and told her to single-handedly speed up the process of achieving some of their goals while bringing in new followers all on her own. Uh, and I am assuming the bits about a fear of a human-like dog called the Big Dog and an irrational fear of being covered in dog food are just them trying to make her out to be mad. Anyway, they have tracked her down again. Uh, located her in the system of Grand Base, and they want us to kill her before they decide to take out their frustrations and kill me instead. I don't think that would go well for them. Oh, it would definitely be fun for me if I tried. I'm always up for a good brawl. Grand base. Ah, there we go. Uh, we're actually fighting the will of Kali at the moment. Apparently, Indiana Jones didn't finish the job well enough. I think this is going to be an assassination style mission. So the Marauder suits me. I need to swap Duarte out for someone else. Copeland, you're in. This will work. So, you may notice my fondness. <laughs> the, 
Duerte, not Duterte. Also, I don't have any Marcuses in my company. Oh, we have a third viewer. Hello. Uh, a quick recap for what you have missed. We are fighting for a splinter church. So we are fighting for the will of Kali, which is a splinter church in the Capellan Confederation. Uh, they have been having issues with a uh, splinter sect that has been engaging in such fun thing as human sacrifice. Uh, and they want us to stomp it out for them. And it's reaching the point that they're telling me that if I don't do it quickly, they're going to try and stomp me out. Uh, to which my response was something along the lines of, oh, please do. It's been a while since we've had any really good violence. I think I'm gonna try and stay up here while I thin out some of those tanks and possibly that Kintaro. Yeah, uh, everyone involved in this except for me has drank the Ribena. Yeah, um... Religion in the Battletech uh, setting is all drawn from actual uh, current religions. Uh, there's a lot of various sects of Christianity. Um, Shinto's common in the Draconis Combine in various forms. Uh, there is a uh, resurgence of Norse polytheism in Rasselhaeg. Surprising no one who knows the history of Rasselhaeg. Uh, 
there are two or three smaller polities that are uh, Islamic. Um, basically, if someone has believed it, come battle tech, you can probably find someone who believes it. Uh, I can't think of anything Hellenic. Uh, there are no specific Jewish polities. But you can, f like... It's mentioned a couple of places in the lore that there are still Jewish communities. The will of Kali is not and there's a bunch of Jewish names that crop up, even if I can't think of any offhand. Well, they've had, by this point, like, close to 40 years to develop the setting. It really, like, that was... That was, um... The intent from the get-go. Was to have it be... realistic like they have a timeline that literally starts in like 1987 <laughs> Ooh, I can get one of the Kentaros And it is the classic Kentaro. Is that Coolio to me getting the classic Kentaro or to the timeline going back to like 87? Where are we? Oof. So they're going to keep this brief. I'm quite lucky I followed Whitby's escape out of that system so closely. Another failure and they'd be forced to immediately fire upon my ship. But since I have the heretics in my sight, they're showing compassion. I and my crew have one final chance to meet their request. Whidbey is headed towards the Claxton system, and one way or another, one of us will not leave that system alive. And it's given me a warning that hazardous terrain and high ambient heat have been detected, and jump capabilities and heat efficient loadouts are advised. This may pose me a problem, because I don't know how many jump-capable mechs I have access to. So I think what we are going to do... Oh, that's convenient. We'll jump to Beetlejuice. We'll see what mechs are for sale here. We'll see what mechs I have access to. Okay, the Cyclops doesn't have jumps. I don't think the Dragon does. The Fire Starter is too light. The Kentaro might. Okay, we're going to kick that atlas to cold storage. We're 
we're going to kick the king standard king crab to cold storage. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm going to keep that one here because he was complicated to build. We can jump you to cold storage. You to cold storage. So that gives me four slots to put max in. It's only forty tons. That's forty five. Okay. So he doesn't have jump capability. So we'll move him back to cold storage. We may be here for a few minutes. He doesn't have jump capability. slots to get them jump jets. We may have several minutes of jumping about looking for uh, suitable mechs. He does. Right. So that's one. Ah, no worries. So let's bring the victors over. I should have a third victor. I do not have a third victor. I must have sold it by accident. That's annoying. We'll make a long trek. We'll come up here to Lee. I need one of those for a mission. I mean, you know, it would not surprise me to have 
ships, cats, even on drop ships. I mean, the number of places they go. You know, there is every chance of having issues with rodents coming aboard. Laser boat, so we don't want that. I think you mean cats on a ship for good luck. But yes. Nothing worth grabbing there. What do I need? Two more. I'm very much regretting getting rid of all my Highlanders at the moment. Yeah, I wish I had even one. The good news is it's taken me so long to jump about and find everything that once I have mechs geared up, they will be fully ready to go by the time we get back. I am having a heck of a time finding decent jump capable mechs. I wish you luck. I don't need luck, I need sense. I wish you sense and not selling all your Highlanders next time. In my defense, I had better mechs. Until they told me I needed jump capability and decent heat. Uh,
Well, I'm in the right neighborhood now because there's a king crab. So I am getting a salt mix. Just not a lot of them. Might I suggest the mm. I have a jump capable mech. Unfortunately, it is an entirely beam loadout, so when they told me uh, you need to be careful of your heat, it's absolutely useless. Ooh, what sort of charger is that? Unfortunately, that's another laser boat. There is a hero mech at Chatham, so we'll try that. I can work with another Victor. I would really like to grab that second Marauder too. It won't 
grab it and throw it in cold storage for the time being. We shall try this one last region. And if we uh, can't get anything here, we'll just have to go with the victors we've acquired so far. Lot of archers. It's a shame that all of the jump capable mechs I am encountering seem to be laser bolts. Alrighty, we'll start making our way down. Industrial hub by industrial hub. Hopefully fill that last slot. I suppose there are worse options than Victor's. Let's fill out our loadouts. So, we are better off using double heat sinks over signals. They are just so much more uh, effective. And I might swap the pulse lasers for standard medium lasers. 
it will reduce our uh, fire rate a bit, but also pick us up a bit of extra tonnage. So I can swap this SRM4 to something. I can definitely give it Artemis. Ah, yes, I can make it six. So I will probably be in the 9k. Give him an AC 20. medium lasers and we will give him in the medium slot probably a 10 in Artemis is our best bet LBX. LB ten X's are five, eleven tons. Whereas standard tens are twelve. He's not getting ECM. We'll give him a third double hit sink. And this fellow can stay basically as is. We will just give him top tier gear. I used to pilot one of these for a while until I got better and I had no complaints. only change I might make will be I'll swap these single heat sinks to doubles.
So double heat sinks are a relatively recent development in the inner sphere. Uh, the idea is that by using the same weight but occupying more volume, or they use the same weight as a standard heat sink, but take up more volume, more critical spaces in the mech, and are twice as effective as standard heat sinks. Uh, the inner sphere variant, which is the only one we'll see in this game, uh, are take up three times the volume of a inner uh, of a uh, single heat sink. Uh, while the clan version are only double the volume because clan tech is just better. At least up until like sometime in the 3060s. is in effect commander your visibility and sensor readings will be compromised out there oh we actually have slightly more of a tonnage allowance than i thought Bateman, you're up. My lasers are on my right trigger. Walk your head. Enemy destroyed. Target applied. Those bridges must have been destroyed by the heretics. You should be able to clear it using your jump jets. Target down. Jump jet fuel flow. This would have been bad without jump jets. Battle mechs do not like walking through lava. Most things don't like walking through lava, if we're honest. Whoa, Rihanna, are you seeing this? A Union dropship completely embedded in 
inside these mountains. Looks like you've seen better days. I'll run an analysis. In the meantime, watch your back. I feel you'll be getting some company soon. So a union carries uh, 12 battle necks. And they're pretty rare. <coughs> I don't like leaving him behind. That seems like a good way to get very shot in the back very quickly. Can't see this union. He was. I was talking. Uh, Mason was talking about earlier. Ah, there's the Union. That big round thing at the top there. So with the exception of the... Uh, BSK bomb sector. Uh, the primary weapon on each of our other victors is the sort that will do a number on any lighter mech with a single shot. And bombs mech makes up for it by having two lighter auto cannons that, if both hit, at the same time, can do the same amount of damage.
the lava as much as possible, Commander. Standing in it will raise your heat levels considerably. Mechs equipped with jump jets ought to be able to clear gaps with ease, provided you regulate your fuel properly. Best not to overdo it. Have a new person. Hello. Right. Wait, thinks I want to come round this way. I may hear hear a helicopter. This is actually good terrain for helicopters. I think Victors were the right choice. Oh, another Union. So I'm going to go out on a limb and suspect that they date back to the Amaris coup. Target neutralized. My alternative working theory as to how uh, Whitby got her hands on so much uh, SLDF tech is that she stumbled across this place and looted the dropships. I think she's going to be in there. If she's not, there might be some decent loot. Target 
We are on your target, Commander. Good, because Warhammers are nasty. Target acquired. Now that the heavies are down, I can focus on the lighter mechs. That Warhammer and that Black Knight did a bit of a number on me. While my lance mates deal with that fire starter, I'll plow through as much of the base as I can. Don't try this in anything lighter than a heavy. It is only uh, heavy and assault chassis that can wade through walls. But once you get a heavy assault chassis, it is a really useful way to finish off uh, this these sorts of destruction. Um, scorched air <laughs> demolition uh, mission specifically. Do not do what that idiot next to me is doing and use Gauss route. Because Gauss slugs do not, contrary to my landsmate's opinion, 
grow on trees. Well, there wasn't loot, but extra pay is always nice. Now, hopefully we don't have much to plow through before we get to Whitby. I am down to 29 Gauss slugs. And I have lost one of my lasers. That was a lucky shot. The Lance Mates must have done a bunch of damage to it before I got to it. Either that, or I managed to get a headshot without trying to. I should also have dealt with that stalker at range. is not worth me using gauss munitions on tanks
So I'm not sure what Whitby's going to be in. I'm suspecting a Highlander or a Black Knight. You just stay standing there. Commander, come in. Never mind. Commander, please, come in. Let's try that again, shall we? So I'm less concerned about the Orion. Or the Phoenix Hawk. That Cyclops is a problem and so is the fact that they are we're basically in a uh, choke point there. I think what I need to do is pull forward into the open area. And also make sure my lance mates are ahead of me going in. Hello to the newcomer. We had just reached the final battle of Hazing of the Week. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Due to standing too close to an exploding stalker, I was down to a single Gauss rifle, uh, which was hazardous to my health when I came up against a Cyclops, a Phoenix Hawk, and a Orion. So we're going to try it again. Destroyed. Those bridges 
must have been destroyed by the heretics. You should be able to clear it using your jump jets. Jump jet fuel low. Jump jet fuel empty. Target destroyed. My leg did not like that. Now there's a Phoenix Hawk around here somewhere. Thank you, Bateman. Phoenix Hawk. So my allies are idiots and because of them I may need to do this one a third time. So, unions, as I mentioned last time, carry, last time we encountered one, carry a dozen battle mechs. Three lances, a full company. They are also exceedingly rare because no one's been able to build them for, or no one in the inner sphere has been able to build them for a few hundred years. We are in the process of figuring out how to build them again. Target acquired. And I have lost my Gauss Rifle, which is not only stupidly expensive, but also takes away the vast majority of my effectiveness. So I am thinking I'm not going to survive this mission and may need to try it a third time. We'll see. New target. If I end up having to do this a third time, I think I might load back to before we start and take one of the mechs with an AC-20. Where I'm, you know, taking the lead here. Destroy. 
I find with Urban Mechs, it's really effective to knock off both the arms. Start with the right arm first, because it's always the one with the heavy cannon. Honestly, I might try taking the Marauder 2. Because it's got considerably more armor. Packs can uh, about the same punch as a Victor. And if I'm careful with my PPCs, the heat load should be bearable. It's probably a bad plan. Yeah, we will ignore the base. There's a base up there. But unless we go up there, we can't find out about it. And if I go up there, I'm dead. So I don't think I've spoken about the Exodus. I think I've referred vaguely to it, but not in any sort of deep. So the uh, early settlement outside of Earth. 
was performed by a group that became known as the Terran Hegemon. They weren't able to govern their wide-ranging uh, expansion. And so the area outside of a roughly 30 light year circle of Earth wound up getting divvied up largely between what became the five great houses or successor states. Eventually, with the development of the battle mech, uh, the Terran hegemony was able to re-establish control of most of the human settlements under the leadership of the House of Cameron. And the House of Cameron formed the Star League, which they intended to govern all of human space. Through a number of particularly brutal campaigns, the Star League Defense Force was able to bring most of humanity under the One Banner. Until one of the polities they were trying to assimilate, uh, the leader of one of the polities they were trying to assimilate, the uh, Rim Republic, became uh, a bosom friend of the then leader of the House of Cameron, uh, Ian Cameron, I believe. While the head of the Star League Defense Force, Alexander Kerensky, was off bringing the uh, Rim Republic into line. Amaris launched a coup, which sparked a particularly bloody civil war. At the end of the civil war, Uh, at the end of the Civil War, the House of Cameron was wiped out, along with um, basically the entirety of the Rim Republic, because Kerensky did not take kindly to his charge uh, being murdered. And none of the surviving great houses could decide uh, on who was going to replace him. Kerensky saw the writing on the wall, realized that uh, what was in the offing was an even more brutal civil war. and decided that he would take whatever portions of the Star League Defense Force would go with him and leave. The idea being that if the Great Houses didn't have any forces, they couldn't fight. Uh, in the end, about 80% of the Def SLDF left with him on his exodus, and they would eventually become the clans. with the will of Kali and our dealings with these heinous zealots. Amen to that. Um. Of the um, 
Star League's bureaucracy, the only bit that really remained extant was Comstar, uh, the Ministry of, or which formed out of the Ministry of Communications, under Jerome Blake. He's a surprise tool that will help us later. Grab everything worth. <sighs> I'm very glad all of these Highlanders are immediately going back in my uh, cold storage. So it's finally done. The mad heretic and all of the weak-minded followers she told lies to are dead, thanks to me. The church does not wish to see Windery's delusional crusade mark her, her or her forsaken cause. As such, we're taking her mech with us. Uh, the will of Kali is, gives us our, their sincere gratitude for our handling of their sensitive issue, but we are the only souls who know of them without being brought into the fold. If we mention them at all, they're going to hunt us down and kill us. That was an expensive mission, given how much damage we took. Copeland is injured, Bateman is fine, and Bomb is fine. So everyone survived, at least. Anyway, I suppose I will call it here for the day. Uh, it has been fun. Uh, hope to see you all again next time. And uh, have a good evening. Fare thee well. <laughs>